She's new. There's this guy in my calculus class. I could talk to him for you. And on April 30th... We're gonna do something. She's not going to take it anymore. Love ya. Mean Girls. Ready PG-13. They're coming April 30th. All right. Hey, how, hey, how are you guys? How are you? You know, so, yes, I did get a haircut. It's a new change of pace, pace but... I hope y'all who watches this live stream like this haircut, but aloha. I've been playing in this for the entire month, and we are here. I know this is a couple of minutes late, but before we go, and we are here to Teddy. I also got a haircut, okay. But we are here anyways, we are here to do a surprise watch party in honor of the 17th anniversary for one of my favorite movies of all time in the top five and my one of my, my favorite comedy ever. And we are going to be talking about Mean Girls. We are, I, this is a surprise watch along. This was completely unannounced and we're here to talk about it. If you have a copy of this on DVD or Blu-ray, please be sure to watch with me. I have it on the main menu. We're going to talk about this. We're going to celebrate this movie, and we're going to have this on. So, and before I get started, I need to make one thing clear, especially to people out there. I need to make one thing clear. Do not post questions in my chat saying what if they did this or what if they did that. We are talking about the movie and the movie only. If you want to ask questions, fine. But do not, please stop doing the what if crap questions. It's getting tiresome. Just ask questions, talk about this, and no, it does not need to write me cards. We it's been over 2007. You need to let Spider-Man 3 go. You need to let it go. Accept the movie for what we got, or if you don't like But I just want to get into this. So, anyways, if you have a copy of Mean Girls and DVD Blu-ray, be sure to watch it with us. I think it's on HBO Max or something, I believe, but find it wherever you can. I will not be playing the movie on here, because I don't want to get copyright shared, but I will answer all of you guys' comments. I'm at the main menu, we're getting ready to play, and we're going to have a good time talking about this and revisiting this movie, so let's join the party. I know we had a good collaboration with you, Network 98, and you guys are going to have to forgive, forgive me, just as much as you want me, much as she tastes wants to taste the taste of food. Take a look. Go and put the bread up. Yeah, we had a good collaboration video. It's it's well respected. Uh, yeah, I'm very happy how it turned out. But anyways, we're gonna get started with Mean Girls. I got the movie here on DVD in the full screen. And I'm about to play it and I'm gonna get my joint. And we'll and we'll get yeah, there will be subtitles on on the DVD too. So let's do it. Yeah. And I'm done with that. Uh, what if blank may blank if is not funny anymore? Okay. Well, I further do. I've been introducing for five minutes, so let's go on and watch me go. 
I didn't know you were doing those things. It's all right. They love, they, they love you. Now we just press play. The writing come up. This is right to PG-13 for language, sexual humor, and team partying. This film has been modified from its original version. It has been from to fit the screen. And here is the Paramount logo at zero minutes. So those are... The Paramount logo from back in 2000. I do miss that logo. I do like the new one, but I do miss this Paramount logo. And that was the music you hear on the feature presentation and on VHS. Here are the credits. Paramount presents a Lauren Michaels production. Lindsay Lohan. Mean Girls. And here's our first introduction to The Father. With the movie and Anna Gasteyer, who plays Katie's mother. Easily from the start of this, you just talk. Now, my history when it comes to Mean Girls, I was first introduced to this by my oldest sister. She first introduced me to this when she first had her own copy, and instantly. I didn't know what I was getting myself into watching this because when, usually when you think of movies like Mean Girls or Mean Girls, mainly with movies like this or any type of movie with go, all girl cast, you may, because some guys may consider this a chick flick. And I'm a guy and I don't mind chick flicks. My, it, but don't talk to me about never discuss after with me until I because I because I will be doing a live watch party for both of those before after we fail this coming October because I'm going to I'm going for after fans can do it all you want but I'm going to tear those movies apart from the inside out when I when I watch them when I because I, I am hoping to go back to watching both after movies. And maybe liking them a little bit more. Well, at least after we fell. Because I think after we collided, I think I was a bit harsh. But I, it was for But anyways, you can see the introduction of the high school that she's going to. And this is our introduction to our character, Katie Herring. Played by Lindsay Lohan. Which, yes, she's been through some troubles in her life. But she's got it together now. And I do hope we get to see her come back to acting. Lizzie Cat for a fun fact the actor the actor who plays um, the actor who plays um Damien he actually follows me on Twitter. Daniel Franzesi he follows me on Twitter. And so does John Cena, who will be playing Peacemaker in Suicide Squad. Josh, don't ever ask me why I ever found it funny because I don't know why I even found it funny. It's okay. And there's Tina Fey and Tim Meadows. Basically, the heart of this movie and why this movie is still as gory as it is. Let me tell you, a movie like this, with some of the comedy they have in this movie, you could, a comedy like this, when, if this came out in the new millennium in this decade, this would have been negatively criticized for a lot of comedy. So, but, so it's great in 2004 that 17 years ago with movies like The Incredibles and The Polar Express and Roy Charles, the Roy Charles movie and Spider-Man 2, one of the best superhero movies ever, that we got a movie, we got a movie like this. And it was... And, and nobody knew how big of a pop culture phenomenon this was going to be. Because this was one of the big things in the 2000s. And it still is a big thing to this day. Tim Meadows, great casting. Everyone in this movie is well casted. But yeah, I was just throwing a little fun fact. out throwing a little fun fact out there for you guys. The actor who plays um, Damien, he actually follows me on Twitter. And John Cena follows me on Twitter. 
And that's for all my YouTube subscribers out there. And just a little reveal. You need a laboratory pass. Your mom's chest hair. <laughs> I want to talk just everything except the movie. Okay, you can talk about whatever you want. Just don't do the what if questions. But but you made that clear. You're not doing any. <laughs> the German teacher, that car, this guy, Jill Messick, who won the producer, she did pass away a few years ago. But did you? It only counts if you saw. It. And these guys are talking about women, of course. Which this is one of the scene comedies I do own in my collection. But yeah, no, come on, let's talk about the movie. All you guys, let's talk about it. I'm sorry we got off to a late start. Forgive me. Mm -hmm. This is my spark from McDonald's my mom bought, so a little product placement. You haven't seen the movie in years. Man, let me tell you, years later after the film came out, this movie is still so freaking funny, so freaking hilarious. What Mean Girls 2 is standalone sequel. What Mean Girls 2 tried to be, and you failed miserably. Mean Girls 2. This is the this is the real Mean Girls. This is the true Mean Girls. Do not watch Mean Girls 2. Mean Girls 2 is an abomination towards the first movie. It is the worst movie ever made. It is, in my opinion, my least favorite movie of all time. It is one of the most infuriating, insulting sequels. What do you think of I Know Who Killed Me? Horrible movie. I remember seeing that movie back, back way back then. And I kind of actually, I kind of didn't hate it. It's not good, but it wasn't awful. Here's, here's Coach Carr. Don't have sex because we'll get pregnant and die. Don't have, have sex in the missionary position. Don't have sex there enough. Just don't do it, partners. Okay, everybody take some rubbish. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Zane Winder says, Hey, hi, Josh. Hi, Zane. Hmm. Okay. Go. Hang on, guys. A little bit of distractions. It's just, it's just distractions, guys. We still are. It's okay. What's your favorite? What's your least favorite Disney movie? Uh, no, 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 no. This for me. We live. You can't hear me. But say, but say, say. Network ninety eight asks Joshua, "What's your least? Okay, least favorite Disney movie? Are you talking about animated, live action, or Disney Channel original movies? Because, we co co clarify it." And this Rachel McAdams, who's going to be in Doctor Strange and Multiverse of Madness. Now, initially, she auditioned for Katie Heron, Heron and Lindsay Lohan auditioned for Regina George, but they thought it would be best for her to play the part of Regina and Lindsay Lohan to play Katie Heron. And also, the same year as this, to all my little romance girls out there, including my sister, which she can't hear me. Um, the Notebook also celebrates its 17-year anniversary this year. But I'm not going to do a live watch party on that because I don't want to end up crying on camera. Any Disney movie. Okay. Least favorite Disney movie in terms of Disney Channel movies is Return to Halloween Channel. That's, that's my least favorite Disney Channel original movie is the Return to Halloween Channel. But... I remember a time where I did like it. I used to love it. Looking back at it now, 
it, while it is one of my least favorites, I, I will say they did try to work with what they had with Return to Halloween Town, but I still don't think Return to Halloween that is a very good movie nowadays. But if I'm in the mood to watch it, I watch it with the Halloween Town films. Hey there, Josh. What's up? Hey, hey. We got more. We got Marco here. What's, what's going on? What's going on? What's going on? Heaven me. And here's the introduction of the plastics. How, it's nice to see you in the pop up in one of these. <laughs> And this this is actually Amanda Seyfried's. This was her very first movie. And now all 17 years later, she's now she was now nominated for for Mank. Which you want me to get into the Oscars thing a little bit. I will say Sure, you can ask me a question. Go go right ahead. I'm all I'm all ears. I'm all ears. As far as animated live action Disney movies go, my favorite animated Disney film are Beauty and the Beast, Mulan, and, no! right, and recently Raya and the Last Dragon. In terms of live action, that's so hard. But yeah, you can, go ahead and answer a question, Marco. Also, yeah, Marco Fasolo, this, this is my fr- this, this is one of my, my friends. No, friend you said it was these two. Could you ever do a Goonies watch? You said I, I'm, you know I'm, 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 pl- I'm planning on it. I'm planning on doing the Goonies watch because I do want to. I do want to watch the Goonies. Uh, yeah, but yes, of course. I, I, I'm planning on. I'm planning on doing it. And. Of course, Lacey Chabert plays the role of of the Gretchen Wieners. Why? Have I ever watched, I watched, watched the Goonies? Goonies? Yes, I, I have. It's great. I've watched Star. the Goonies. I am. Um, yeah, I, yeah. I, I saw first saw the Goonies. And you, you got. Pay no attention to the distractions in the background. Pay no attention to the distractions in the background. But yes, I have seen The Goonies. I love it. It's one of my favorite films of the eighties. It, it every time every time I watch it, it never gets old. Lizzie Cat. <laughs> You see, I'm laughing out loud because my God, Danny DeVito. <laughs> this, I'm t- this movie is quotable. And yes, for all all the people who know me, who they, who doesn't know, yeah, it is one of my favorites as well. <laughs> but. Lizzie Kaplan and David Frenzies and Lizzie Lohan, they all have great chemistry in their scenes together in this movie. It's good writing and a good direction. There's a reason why I put this high as one of my favorite comedies. Right, right, right next to Booksmart. No, it's okay. It's, it's, it's okay, Mark. You didn't meet it's okay. We, we all made mistakes, buddy. You've seen some of my horror rankings on Facebook, such as Nicholas Lee. Yes, I have. And the Cinema Guy, mine too. I love Mean Girls, one of my favorite teen movies. Yes. Mean Girls is great. Mean Girls, 17 years later, this is still one of the best teen movies we've gotten. I cannot say the same for the, the standalone sequel because I'm just going to tell you right now. Again, I said I. Mean Girls 2, despite it, it is not, it's just a carbon copy of this one. It doesn't have any of the awesomeness or the, or the awesome, awesome humor. It's just. Booksmart as well as Dumb and Dumber are my two favorite comedies of all time. I, lo- I love Dumb and Dumber. Dumb and Dumber is also another one of my favorite comedies. 
My favorite team movie is Ferris Bueller's Day Off. That's another good one. It's good. That's my dog, guys. That's my. He he's a little. He he he, he bought. Anytime someone opens and closes the door or something, or something, he gets a little. He gets a little tampered up. So. Forty percent. For you. Lindsay Lohan, she has she has some she has some good roles. She's also done a lot of bad roles, but you know what? No matter what actor, or no matter if you're an actor or a filmmaker, you're always going to have at least step or come across a bad project or mediocre projects. But but just the chemistry. My favorite coming of age team film is Lady Bird. I will say, yeah, Lady Bird, I think is a good movie, but I will, this is going to get me a little bit of trouble, but I think Lady Bird is a little bit overrated, but it's a good movie. I, I'm not going to, I'm not going to knock the movie down for being good. It is a good movie. But coming of age films are also some of my favorites. Here's she's trying to talk to Aaron Samuels and my favorite movie of 2020 so far it's a, it's a four way tie because you have nobody you have this Netflix movie I saw which was Ride or Die which is based on a Japanese a manga and then you have Malcolm and Marie which also came out on Netflix and then you have Raya and the Last Dragon <laughs> And now she's sitting watching him at football practice. Get in, loser. We're going sh- shopping. God's. Oh, my favorite movie of 2020. You know, I meant to do my best movies of 2020, but I've just been slowing down a little bit. But I'm going to try and get that done this year because I that is long overdue. I meant to do it at the beginning of January or last year. But I wanted to wait until Soul and Wonder Woman 84 got released and then st- life happened. So I'm still going to do my best movies of 2020. But I will give I will give you a little bit of a hint. It's not, it, it was The Invisible Man for a while. But you'll see what my number one favorite is when I do my best movies of 2020. If 2020, then Soul was my favorite of that year. Saul was actually a, one of my biggest surprises of last year. I went into it is not really knowing what to expect, but then again, I ended up really enjoying it. Godzilla vs. Kong is my favorite of the year so far. Uh, that that's Godzilla vs. Kong. That was a fun. It's a fun movie. I I really enjoyed it. Go ahead. <laughs> this phone this phone call point is hilarious. Minari is my favorite movie of 2020. Soul, The Invisible Man, and Spontaneous were my top favorites of 2020. I I really like Spontaneous. It was a it was a really great film. Uh, I'm sorry, guys. It's just if all you guys are watching this with me, it's just this movie has a great soundtrack. Here we're introduced to Amy Poehler and the the sister of Regina George. <laughs> Boris of Party was my favorite. Yes, I Boris of Party is also I will let me say this all, y'all. I will never understand the reason why that movie is not so well loved. Boris of Party, it wasn't that bad. It's not a feminist agenda movie. I don't so anybody Boris of Party was terrific. I will never understand why so many people do not like that film. 
I understand if it's the it's whole hardly like co- ho- because of suicide, the whole thing with suicide squad and all, be, being bad, but if but let me tell you, Brothers of Power is not is not an SJW movie. It's not try it's not a man hating movie as people has made out to be. I'm like, is you kidding me? How freaking delusional can you be? I saw the movie for myself. There was in no way, shape, or form. It was in no way, shape, or form an SJW feminazi movie. And it is, and it does suck that Birds of Prey bomb financially because I would have loved to have seen what else they could do. Oh, well, what, what are you going to do? I guess people just saw trailers and because they they, they didn't like what they saw see in the trailers, they decided, I'm going to, this is a man bashing movie, I'm going to stay at home and let, this, let the movie bomb, which, shame on you because Birds of Prey, it was actually a good movie. And Margot Robbie is a lot of fun to watch in, and so is Huntress, Black Canary. But in the in the next couple of years, it will I guarantee is gonna get a cult following. But you're right about that. It will I think it is gonna get a cult following in the next couple of years. So many movies that didn't do well financially always gets a cult following. Amy Poehler is very fun. she she's a very she is hilarious in this movie, and there's the burn book, which is going which the burn book, you never burn about. I don't Evan the cinema guy says I don't care who's in it. I just want to have fun. What is my opinion on people who criticize a movie from when they only seen the trailer? If you judge a movie based on the trailer, then you ain't then you then you're not being fair to the filmmakers. I think it's kind of it's pretty unfair to the filmmakers. You have to really be open minded about about the movie when, by actually watching it and judge it when you watch the movie. I'm not a regular mom, I'm a cool mom. That's one of the most quotable things. Ask when she really is. That's for your feet. Katie, there are two kinds of evil people. People who do evil stuff and people who see evil stuff being done and don't try to stop it. Does that mean I'm morally obligated to support that? <laughs> but yeah, in a couple of years, I, Bros of Party will get a cult following. Booksmart was under the radar when it hit cinemas, but it will find its footing within the next few years, much like Brothers Park. I do want to do a live watch watch along for Booksmart, if hopefully for the month of my 23rd birthday, because I do have some stuff planned for August this year, including my follow up companion piece to my top 100 favorite movies of all time. But, yeah, Booksmart is very under the radar. Ashley Boyle's a party is already being embraced on social media. I, I, I'm glad I'm glad more people are starting to give Boyle's a party a chance. But Booksmart was one of the most underrated films of 2019. A lot of people, Olivia Wilde did a great job directing it. I can't wait to see her next director effort, Don't Worry Darling, and she's also directing a Spider-Woman movie for Sony. I thought the chemistry between Beanie Felstein and Caitlin Dever was great. The sound, it just, it hit, it hit all the right notes. I can see why some people don't like Booksmart, but it's completely fine. Booksmart was funny. Yes, it is. And here we have the classic four-way phone call, which has been parodied so much, even including on social media like TikTok and YouTube, and, and for a good reason. But Booksmart is a really funny movie, and I'm glad Bros. of Party is getting the love it deserves. But it's just, these all these people here on social media judges a movie because it has women in it because the women are not apparently those things going on i even book smart did receive universal claim in 2019 but it's not fully embraced yet 
No, it no. I don't think it's not embraced fully yet. I think with the cult following, it can get there. I haven't even mentioned Aaron Samuels, played by Jonathan Bennett. I think he's he did a great job in his role. Everyone does a good job in this movie. This is what happens when you have good direction and good writing. Mark Waters directed this. The same, the same director who gave us the 2003 version of Freaky Friday, which I enjoyed. And then he gave us Vampire Academy with Zoe Dutch, which she wasn't the problem. Zoe Dutch was not the problem with that movie. The problem with that movie is just it wasn't very, it wasn't very good. The flyer, Miss, don't bring some other car with you. Book Smart is better than Far From Home. I, I actually have Spider Man Far From Home right, right here. I, I have it right here on Blu ray. I actually, I actually, but I do love Spider Man Far From Home. But I can understand why some people didn't like Far From Home. I saw opinions. And now we're at the Halloween party. <laughs> I'm a mouse. <laughs> and Katie's showing up as the zombie bride or the ex wife. But not nah, fair comparison. No, no, it's all right. You're you're okay to make a lot. You're allowed to make any comparison you want. So I wouldn't say comparing Booksmart to Spider-Man: Far From Home is unfair. In a lot of ways, I can see why some people, including my friend Mark, would say that. The thing is, Far From Home is good, but most of the execution is extremely surface level. I personally really love Spider-Man: Far From Home. I did have a few problems with it, but I'm excited to see what No Way Home has to offer. Now, No Way Home, it could either be a... It could, which hate base is worse, the Far From Home fan base or the Dark Knight Rises fan base? I don't know. The Dark Knight Rises fan base... The Dark Knight Rises fan base is incredibly... It's toxic because if you say you love the Dark Knight Rises, Rises, you're gonna get fussed at. But me, I unapologetically love the Dark Knight Rises. I showed it to my sister because she never seen any of the Dark Knight movies, and I showed it to my my one of my youngest sisters, and she really loved the Dark Knight Rises. Even even if it was two hours and forty five minutes, it it went by, it still goes by quick. There are some things I can understand people having issues with, with the Talia Agul twist and the whole thing that Alfred left Bruce. But when you really think about it in The Dark Knight Rises, he said, and I quote, leaving was the only thing I have to make to make you understand. Because he's trying to go out there and be Batman again. But also, but far from ho- far from home, Naysayers are far too harsh. I can see as to why some dislike, but some go out of their way to insult those who love it. Let people consume movies the way they want want to. I definitely agree, Mark. It's okay about the poor grammar. It's it's per, it's perfectly fine. But if you ask me, I think the fan base that is the most toxic is the Last Jedi fan base. The Last Jedi fan base is incredibly toxic because, let let me explain. All of these people have this whole, they have this whole, like, preconceived notion and fan theories about how Episode Eight was going to play out. And then you go online, you not only attack people who love the movie, but you also attack the director because he had a vision. And you attacked Kelly Marie Tran, basically harassing her off social media, which is, I think, is uncalled for. And then you get mad over some of the decisions Ryan Johnson made, like making Luke Skywalker live alone 
and deal with his failures, which I thought was a very interesting way to go. Because let's face it, in the 30 years between Return of the Jedi and The Force Awakens and The Last Jedi, you're not going to be that same badass Luke Skywalker you once were. And they just jumped. They were watching Friday the 13th, part two. The Dark Knight Rises, I can see the criticism, but it's an epic conclusion for that trilogy. What do you rate The Amazing Spider-Man? I think The Amazing Spider-Man is okay, but it's got a lot of problems. Lots of problems. So I'm going to, in all my, I would say it's a C plus, it's a C minus at best. There's good things in it. It's just, the, it's just that Sony just rushed into the reboot scenario way too soon. Instead of learning the, from their mistakes. And I'm one of those people who love Spider-Man 3. I had it at one time as my favorite Spider-Man movie until Into the Spider-Verse came out. So they're pretending like nothing is wrong. They're going along with the strategy plan. The Amazing Spider-Man 2 is garbage, though. I actually... I absolutely really like The Amazing Spider-Man 2. It's got, but again, it has the same problems as the first movie, and it doesn't really feel, it feels more like a Sinister Six uh, movie. Last Jedi might be a flawed movie to some, but you cannot deny it felt like a Star Wars movie that seemed that didn't seem to be hacked by Disney. I, it felt like a Star Wars movie. It's the most beautifully shot in, that, in the sequel trilogy. Uh oh. <laughs> I like how they incorporate. I like how they incorporated the whole sound effects of animals when it gets to the when it gets to the school fights. That was actually pretty cool, and that does come back in the play later on. I wish I could say the same for the Rise of Skywalker. I don't blame J.J. Abrams for that movie. I don't even blame anybody for that movie. I do very much like Rise of Skywalker, but I can tell with the pressure that they had with The Last Jedi and such, I can easily tell that there was something isn't right. What Something wasn't right there. I felt like if they were went with the original Episode Nine draft, I think it would have been a much more respected movie and it would have been a better received film and it would have been and it could have ended the sequel trilogy on a high note. But because toxic Star Wars fans had to complain about episode 8, that wasn't the case. Zane Winder, you said Mean Girls 2 is your least favorite movie. Yes, it is my least favorite movie. The Last Jedi is the most beautifully shot, best directed, and scripted Star Wars films. Everything about it fires on almost all cylinders. It's, it's just all the structure at times. Yes, it is all the structure. And I definitely agree with every statement you make, Mark, because it, it's, I think it's one of the best movies of the last decade. I'm just going to put it out right there. That and The Force Awakens. And it just, I like the fact that The Last Jedi is able to take risks. But apparently, any fan base, if you take risks, fans get butt hurt and they start having this ongoing war on Twitter, on Instagram, on Facebook, all over social media. Okay, I just had to make sure this ain't one. Oh, yes, it is still, Mean Girls 2 is still my least favorite movie ever. But I will be doing my worst movies of all time for my 23rd birthday. And you'll see the full list. I just have to make sure I'm comfortable with my worst of list before I actually film or do voiceover, whichever whichever one I choose to do first. Janice, I can't invite you. I, it gets a 9 out of 10 for me, 9.5 out of 10. I don't usually do decimals, but it's almost perfect. I get I, when I reviewed the movie back in 2017, I gave it an epitastic on my rating system, and I still stand by it. I don't, I don't think it's a bad movie. And the, 
I can understand not liking the movie, but to go out of your way, like I said, it's go out of your way and threaten the director, one of the stars, even going as far as sending Death Threats way back when The Force Awakens with Daisy Ridley and such. Unnecessary. Unnecessary. I don't send them, I just get them. Rise of Skywalker is crap. Every worst decision they could think of, they put in there with bad results. As I just recently said, I think if they would have went with the original plan with Colin Chavall's original script, I think Rise of Skywalker could have, episode, episode 9 could have been great. Taylor Zimmerman, two for you. Glenn Coco. You go, Glenn Coco. <laughs> Eddie Heron. And don't forget your winners. Bye. <laughs> Here it goes. <laughs> do, do I still give Saw 5 an F? Yes. Yes, I still stand by that. I'm not changing my mind. There are there are quite a few movies I've seen where I can end up instantly changing my mind. Where one time I initially like it and I hate it, or I can initially hate it or in this and go back to and end up liking it. It's happened to me with Batman Under the Red Hood, where I didn't like that movie at first, but now I do. And also with Thor Ragnarok. I didn't hate that movie when it first came out. I gave it a C plus, but looking back at it, back a year after it, I took more time to watch that movie, and it's still my least favorite Marvel Cinematic Universe movie. But it it I've warmed up to the movie now, so now I do like that movie. There are some good traps though. Yeah, there are good traps in Saw 5, but it isn't enough to, enough to save the movie from getting an elf. As you see, Damien, he's singing, in the talent show, he's singing Beautiful, which we all know, Beautiful, from the early 2000s. Oh, you... My rating is a D plus. It seems fair. Yeah, Kevin Lepore on stage with his friends. Kevin Lepore. <laughs> that was that was funny in the town. That that is still funny. Use the original choreography. <laughs> but but as I said, Mark, if if you don't like um the movie that, if you don't like Rise of Skywalker, it is completely fine. I fine. I've seen all different sides of the spectrum with that movie. I've seen people who like the movie. I've seen some people who say they hate the movie, and I've seen people who say they're in the middle. I'm in the like category, but I got a lot of problems with Rise of Skywalker. And plus, with all the stuff that just came out about it, I'm like, Lucasfilm, you really hacked into the last part of the Star Wars sequel trilogy. Not cool. Not cool. Jingle bell, jingle bell, jingle bell, rock. Jingle bell, shine and jingle bell, time. They sing a person in jingle bell square. And, <laughs> and, and you just kick the, the, the radio right in front of Jason.
We're still going right here. We're, we're 30 some odd minutes into the movie and 45 minutes to live. 45 minutes or so, almost 46 minutes to live stream. So I think, thank all of you guys who have been, who've been sending your comments for me to read and watching the movie along with me. I'll thank, thank all of you guys. You got, you guys are epitastically awesome. Stop trying to make fetch happen. It's not going to happen. Small Caesar. And we're, because that's not what Rome is about. Gretchen, Gretchen Williams is cracked. And now we get into, into the nitty gritty here. Regina George is dating, is flirting with Shane Oldman. Mm hmm. But yeah, every, when you make bad decisions with movies, you can end up getting a very poorly made movie in the results. So, I think that's also what happened with Rise of Skywalker, too. So, Mark is not wrong there. Favorite genre of movies? Well, I like, I love all different genres of films. I love action, adventure, fantasy, crime drama, crime thriller, mystery, suspense, horror, romance, superhero. But if I had to pick one, this is hard, but I guess, I guess either superhero movie or sci fi fantasy. It's between those two. Another one would be horror, because horror, you like to get scared. People want to go scare, and you like to get scared so easily. Sci-fi fantasy is, but but my favorite would be comic book films. Yes, we may have some bad comic book movies on the side, but there's a lot of good comic book movies to make up for a lot of the bad ones. No. No. You just want to buy your carbs. <laughs> But in terms of, but it's good that you asked that question, Eddie. And yes, I, yes, I, I do plan to do a live commentary for the Goonies. It's in the works. I have some stuff in the works coming for this channel. It's like being famous. In this shot of the four girls walking around here, this has been parodied in other movies and music videos, too. <laughs> I hear Regina George is dating Aaron Samuels again. The two were seen canoodling at Chris Isles' Halloween party. They've been inseparable ever since. Yeah. 
You can tell this is all 2000s, too. No fun, no fun getting stuck in the gar in the garbage can, especially in the high school garbage can. That is not fun at all. Word of vomit. Actual vomit. <laughs> What movie do you hope doesn't get delayed? Well, while we're on the subject, I'm hoping Denise Villeneuve's Dune doesn't get delayed again. It's been delayed once. For this, it comes out on October the first this year, and I'm I'm very excited to see it. It, it looks really, it looks really great. And first, is going to be is going to be the first of two of two part film adaptation, and it might become the next big franchise of this year. And, but then, But as I was saying, I hope Denise Villeneuve's Dune does not get delayed because I really want to see that movie. I love Denis Villeneuve as a filmmaker. I love all the movies I've seen of him. His five American made movies. Prisoners, Enemy, Sicario, Arrival. My favorite Denis Villeneuve movie is Blade Runner 2049. I love that film. I think that movie is a magnificent work of art, and that movie should have made more money at the boss office in uh, in 2017. That movie should have been seen by a lot more people. I know it is 163 minutes long, and I know for show times, but I but yeah, I I am excited to see Villeneuve's take on Dune since it is a passion project and. He wants to, and his passion project is a passion project for him. And me, and I'm doing a review. I'm doing a little series called "The Road to Dune" coverage, which I will be covering the previous interpretations, but also trailer reactions, breakdowns, care talk about the character posters, do a soundtrack review. I might do a live watch party for you guys since it'll probably is because it's gonna be going to fears of HBO Max. But I really hope Dune does not get delayed because that movie looks incredible, and I love the cast. We got Timothy Chalamet, Zendaya, Oscar Isaac, Jason Momoa, David Dasmashian, Dave Bautista, Rebecca Ferguson. It's Lady Jessica. That's a great cast right there. And Timothy Chalamet, he's a great actor too. I, do you think Spider-Man No Way Home will get delayed? With the way things are going right now with people taking vaccines and theaters are starting to open back up, I, I don't think it's going to get delayed. But for some people, it, that, with all the stuff they're cramming into that movie, they could see it as a good thing or it could be like a cluster clusterfuck of a movie. But No Way Home has my interest, and some some fans are probably theorizing Miles Morales is going to show up. I don't think Miles is going to show up, but I could be wrong. I can be proven wrong. I've been proven wrong once, multiple times. I can be proven wrong again. So, so at the Hedgehog, I was proven wrong. Um, was, and I was one of those people. Yeah, I'm not pessimistic about everything. It's just sometimes with most of these movies that you think look bad, you do have to question yourself. Yeah, I, w I was questionable about Jumanji Welcome to the Jungle, and look how that turned out. I actually really like Jumanji Welcome to the Jungle. It was fun. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you.
in here, they are trying to trying to give Reggie McAdams a dress. No, this is just how they work. But yeah, it's good that Lindsay Lohan, she's doing well now. Yes, as I say, she's done. Yeah, we all do things we're not proud of, but she's learned from her mistakes. And everyone deserves a, a shot at redemption. Everyone, no matter what you've done, except for except for those who who are in the wrong and won't won't admit it. She's lost her hot body, and now Aaron Samuels. Here's Tina Fey. Fairly. Who quizzes Katie. And for, for her little small part, part, I gotta say Tina Fey does a great job. As Mrs. Norbury. I wouldn't have picked anybody else. And you can tell that this movie, this is her baby. She wrote the script. And she even had a hand in the music and lyrics for the Broadway production. Yep, they turned Mean Girls into a Broadway musical. That's how much people really care about, about this movie. And still care about it 17 years later. People who hate the movie because it doesn't go their way, they are pathetic. You are not lying there. Just, I understand hating a movie, but hating a movie only because it doesn't, just because it doesn't go the way you want it to, because you did, what, Last Jedi, you hate that movie because you didn't get Luke Skywalker being badass in the first five minutes. I'm sorry. Things, it's like John, Tra, it's like John Travolta said in Swordfish. Not everything goes the way you think it should. I'm not, I know it's it's sad, but it's the tr- it's the reality. It's telling the truth and it hurts. But people who hate a movie just because it don't go that way, that is so ridiculous. I'm like. I don't hate movie. I don't hate any every movie because it doesn't go the way I want. I judge, I judge it based on what I see, what is presented in front of me. And then I guess people will say, I guess people are gonna say, if that's the case, Josh, if you think people, if you think movie doesn't go the way you think it goes, why why do you hate? But. I had to breathe there. But people say, Josh, you're saying that now. If that's the case, how come why you ain't a fan of the after movies? I've explained why in my reviews after after we collided. Do you like Pepsi? Yes, I like yes, I do like Pepsi. It's it's a cool soda. Isn't it's a good soda. It's a nice soda drink. But yeah, I do like Pepsi. Oh, we still have one. Pe- we still have one person watching. I'm not going anywhere. I'm just well, she has a right to know. Oh, <laughs> that. If, like as I was saying at the beginning of this, if if Mean Girls, if this was, if this came out in this decade or last decade, you would have some of the stuff, some of the humor here would not fly. 
I picked up the Saw Collection on DVD. Good for you, Eddie. Because if that's discussed, you can't sue with us. <laughs> Sweatpants all that piss me right now. The Rachel McAdams, she went from this to having a lot more great roles in her career. And she and she's coming back. For Doctor, I'm excited to see her, her return in Doctor Strange and the Multiverse of Madness next year. Which of the MCU movie projects that is my most excited of the Marvel Cinematic Universe projects? But in terms of MCU TV shows, WandaVision was my most excited, and it lived up to my expectations. And I, and I'm I'm in the camp that actually loves the finale of the show. It was a great finale. I did a review, a spoiler-free review of that. I will be doing a spoiler-filled discussion coming very soon. If I don't... How would you rank the Marvel Cinematic Universe franchises? Well, if we're talking about best to worst, the worst... Is really this is really hard, but number one would be the Avengers. Number two would be Guardians of the Galaxy. Number three would be the MCU Spider Man. Number four would be the Iron Man films, and number five would be the Thor franchise. But I like them all. I like every MCU movie. TV shows, that's another story because there's only one TV show I'm not a fan of from the Marvel Cinematic Universe and that is Iron Fist. But Shang-Chi looks a lot better than that. Now we have the housewarming party over at Katie's house. About my small get-together. Taylor Weddle. He's just using her to make him mad. Oh! I forgot about the Ant Man franchise. The Ant Man franchise is very, is is high. So re ranking them number seven would be Thor, number six would be Iron Man, number five would be number five would be um the Captain America franchise, number four would be Ant Man, number three would be the MCU Spider Man, number two would be Guardians of the Galaxy, and number one would be the Avengers franchise. But I love them all. <laughs> I like inventing her, you know what I mean. And yes, <laughs> you see, y'all drunk, you drunk, drunk at the party. But they, they're playing with the tribal vases. <laughs> He, he wasn't blowing you off. He was there. He was there. He just it's hard to find you when you have a small get together. Can talk. Oh no. Look. I don't want to hurt your feelings, but I only Now that joke is is still pretty funny. He says I only date window color. But Big no no. What do you think about movies repeating the title or adding a the or without the without without the word the? It's confusing a lot of times with most of these most of these movies repeating the same title. But honestly, if you're a new entry in the series, you might as well just put a number beside it. Because as well, you don't you don't get a number anymore. But if when you put the words, when you but the whole changes of using the word the uh, and the without the uh, it's it's confusing. Why isn't Gun Suicide Squad called Suicide Squad 2? 
because his versus Suicide Squad is meant to be a standalone sequel plus soft reboot to the 2016 David Ayer Suicide Squad. Which, I'm in the camp. I still like Suicide Squad from 2016, but there was a lot of problems. I got a lot of issues with that movie, too. But it's, I don't think it's the worst thing ever. It's just one of my least favorite DCEU films. And here we get into the no, this is, you're just like a part of Virginia. And Virginia Joyce finna come in. More vomit from more vomit. No, wait a minute. Astral vomit. Yeah. That is disgusting. And here we have the big part here. Janice, I cannot stop this car. I have a car for you. You're not pretending anymore. You're plastic. Cold, shiny, hard plastic. Jen is 1 a.m. is now 1 10. This is honestly one of my favorite parts in this entire movie with her and Lizzie Kaplan while they're driving in the car and she's walking. This is one of my favorite scenes in the film. Because this is honestly true. Some people get too far gone and you act like you're innocent. Oh no, she did not. Then with you classics. Everybody is in love with you. Actually, everybody hates you. Regina, and guess what? He still doesn't want Do you hate the driving missions in Grand Theft Auto V? I've never played Grand Theft Auto V. Oh, Grand Theft Auto Five for Xbox. I do. Oh, I do. I just haven't played. I just haven't played it all the way through. So I can't really comment on the driving missions, but I do own it. Okay. Okay. And Regina George is called Full Cuckoo. Oh. Going home, child. <laughs> and she write and she's writing the false thing about her, which gets the whole school in trouble, which we're going to get into because this is honestly this is one of the funniest parts of the movie that coming up, but this is also one of the saddest parts because you have to, you stop and wonder that some high, some kids in the high school, they are like this. Some boys and girls, especially most girls in high school, they will end up hurting the other girl or getting into a fight. It's a big fight inside a hallway. And, um, it could, and we can, we all can say the most hurtful things to each other that it can, it can easily have have all of us kids, even adults, into an ongoing conflict that can never stop. So it can just only can be stopped if you start doing something positive, which is why you can see. I can definitely relate to some of the stuff that goes on here, even though I'm a guy. 
It urges. You're going to want to take clothes off and start to drunk. You will get cold media and die. What's worse, a people who criticize a movie but only seeing a tra- the trailer or hating a movie because it's popular? Honestly, it's a mix of both. It's a mix of both. That's not how you spell. That's not how you spell chlamydia, Coach Car. Just that evil look in Rachel McAdams' eye as she stares at Katie. That you can say, Rachel McAdams, she's so good at playing the asshole character. You. You're not supposed to like Regina George because she's evil, but you can't help but love her. Yes, I've seen you before. You better get your story straight because I'm not messing around her. She's trying to make it look like we really, we really she broke it. You know, also, all the, all these... But all this body shaming in movies nowadays is no time isn't isn't on social media. Body shaming someone is on the calls for it. Like for for example, you see people. You have actors and actresses like Catherine Langford or just recently Danielle Rose Russell from Legacies who has been body shamed on social media, especially on Twitter, and I just look and I just see and you hear stuff like this and I'm just like, what a society we live in when you can't when we can't even stop body shaming people for having their own bodies. It's unnecessary. It's unethical. It depends on how good the movie is. Yes it is. Yes it does. Here they go. They fighting. Trying to pack me over Cole's car. <laughs> I shouldn't be laughing at this, but the way they put in the sound effects and with the line and stuff is is pretty funny. And then the one joke coming up. Um. The one joke coming up when he says, Mom, can you pick me up? I'm scared. I'll be scared too. If a big fight like this, I'll be running for my life. Whoever wrote it probably didn't think anyone would ever see it. I hope that nobody else ever does see it. And it all because of all. What she wrote, stuff is going on here. And just the way the camera just zooms out of the whole chaos is ensuing. Do you know Ryan O'Toole's worst movie is Superman 4? Yes, I do. Then you told somebody. She told. (laughs) Dude, are, are you kidding me? The goals are gone. Cooking. This is war now. Full tilt jungle madness. Mm-hmm. Just throwing each other off the stairs, fighting in the hallways, kicking each other, slamming each other through lockers. It's like it's like it's like a war in the high schools. Coach Carr step away from the underage girls. And he ran because he knew he messed up. Boom. The fire alarm and then all the water comes out. All junior girls were put to the gymnasium immediately. <laughs> What do you think of the Jonah show? I I watched it on Disney Channel back when it came on, and I enjoyed it. It was fun. It was entertaining. It's entertaining. And you see, and you see all all the girls being, hey, 
<laughs> the facial expressions they give. Daniel Frenzies wearing sunglasses. Never in my 14 years as an educator have I seen such behavior. And from young ladies, I got parents calling me on the phone asking that someone get shot. All the cancel your screen flame. I'm not going to do that because we already paid DJ. Funny part about that line, I did read in the original the original script for this, and initially it wasn't. We've already paid the DJ. It was initially, I'm not going to cancel the spring fling because we already paid the caterers. I think they changed it. They changed it. You see how script writing takes a form of this as you write a script. The, the script it takes starts to take the life the life the life of the zone. Well, I don't know why I stu I'm stuttering so much. What do you think of Kevin James? He's a funny actor. Except for most of the happy mass and stuff. Which, luckily, half of it, I've avoided. The other half, I've, I've seen. But there are, a f for more, there are some... <laughs> Miss Norbury. Ancestral, caring, graceful woman. There has to be something you can say to these ladies. Something to help with their own self. And for all you people, all the go along, go along. Huh? Yes. Every click has its own problem, so what is an F movie that you enjoy? Hmm. Well, a lot of people they I see I don't I don't really have a answer for that. There's been a lot of movies that a lot of people didn't like that I enjoy. If I said the obvious, it'd be Batman vs. Superman, but I'm going to change up my answer a little bit. So, I don't know. It's a hard question to ask if you're, if you're being honest about it. Try to scratch my head. New haircut. But and also to all the people out there who are that who has had problems with self esteem or such, don't be afraid to talk. Don't don't be afraid to talk talk to someone. There's help out there. What are you dealing with depression or mental illness or suicide or anything? Just don't be afraid to step up and talk to somebody. But I look that is that is the truth that is the truth what Tina's face said about all the girls. All, 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 the, all the girls out there, because all the girls, and surprisingly, most of the girls, they still do this, but it's not as harsh. You gotta stop calling each other. Y'all gotta stop body shaming each other. And we have to all realize that nothing, that we all can't be be as be be as nice about it. Because. It, because if you bully somebody for self-esteem or for having a huge, having huge curves or something, whether you're a woman or a guy, if you 
or whether if you're transgender or LGBTQ or autistic, like I am, or non-autistic. Y'all, you have, don't be afraid to speak up and talk and get help out there because top five worst Blumhouse movies. Paranormal Activity 5, Paranormal Activity 6, Ghost Dimension. Those are two. Fantasy Island, even though that's, say, Guilty Pleasure, is still not good. Um, Ouija. And, um... I don't know what the fifth one would be, but those are my top four least favorite Blumhouse movies. We've been here for a good while, so we're now at 21 minutes in. The movie is only 96 minutes, hour 36 minutes, but I think we, we get we getting through, but by the time this is over, this will be even two hours. Like, even two hour live stream. And that was it. Camp One is given. Oh, we got two. We still have two people watching. So yeah, I just what just say just was just saying. Don't be afraid to talk to someone if you haven't dealing with self esteem problems such because. And we all need to stop body shaming, talking bad about one of the other. One of the other, because you never know. You never know what they are going through. And now, Regina George, Rachel McAdams, and Lisa Lauren, they're going outside. Everyone just go and see what's going on between the two. Batman and Robin is not a masterpiece, but I, I see the sarcasm there, Johnny Jerry. I see the sarcasm there. Your top five is Ouija, Paranormal Activity 3, Fantasy Island, 2, True for Dare, 1, Paranormal Activity with Mark. True for Dare is, is, guilty, is guilty pleasure. It's not good, but I have a first time watching it for how unintentionally self-aware it tries to be. Tribal vases. Paranormal activity six, not three. Okay. The homeschool fallout. No, only thing worse than going back will not be going, will be not going back. You know, Warhawk, you're lying. You just focus on your studies for a while. Three is easily the best of the paranormal activity movies. Johnny Jerry, is Gotti a guilty pleasure? No, I didn't see Gotti. I did not see Gotti. I have not seen Gotti with John Travolta. I heard a lot of bad things about it, so I just said, no, I'm not going to see it. I choose my movies wisely, but I will come across some bad ones, movies I don't think are very good if I have to. I can pretty much say whatever I want about after or after we collided without any remorse, without sympathy. Because I don't like those movies. Yeah, I'm going to say the same exact thing when we talk about in October when After We Fell comes out. I'm going to be honest. I'm not going to, I'm not going to say After is good because everyone, all the, all everyone else likes it. It's, it's an opinion. If you can't take it, then sorry. 
Do a commentary on Brokeback Mountain. I'm not sure. Because, yeah, because for old, some guys, people, it will, it is be uncomfortable to watch. But I know it is one of my favorite LGBTQ films, but I don't think I would, I would be, I, the review would be fine, but I'm not sure, a commentary, I'm not sure. It's certainly true. The school board thought it was best to investigate every claim made as Miss Burnbrook. That book was written by a bunch of girls who make up rumors because they own with the board their own lame wives. Well, unless someone wants to come forward and say I made it all up. Say that someone sells drugs in high school it is it I'm gonna say it. I'm feeling the sense to say that someone that sells drugs in high school is a serious, is a serious condition. Not, it's a very serious condition. You get into spending jail time. What? Fuck you! Really look like you from kids. Like for real. Y'all find other houses. Yeah, we gotta look them up. <laughs> yeah, because if you came from look behind Shell and look behind Shell, they got mm-hmm. two houses side by side, one is a 207 one, closest one is 208. Right. came over here where we try like we go to Walmart, and it's one right there, there's two, it's 52. You gotta look up. Then the damn white house up here is empty. Right around the corner. But you don't know who owns that. Mm-hmm. So- None of them, we gotta look at if not, then I don't know what to do. Who's gonna be rich? Oh, be careful. Ow! Do you know who Storm Rivera is? No. Damn. No, I, I seen your Nolan Rankin once. Mm, network 98. Tenant following Dunkirk into Cell of Dark Knight Rises Insomnia Prestige. Memento of Batman begins Inception Dark Knight. Okay. Now, where's the cl- climax of the movie? It's pink. Guy is a DJ. Let's climax with each of them. We got three people still watching chat, but. I know your bill to eat cheap. This is stuff in my diaper. Mm. Okay. <laughs> but as good as ranking of Christian Nolan's movies. Twice the larger of two numbers is three more than five times smaller, and the sum of four times the larger and three times the smaller is seven times the larger. Yeah. 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 Sometimes, yes, but nowadays, it's up to the parents.
that's the only joke in the movie where I felt like ma- it didn't it didn't really make any any make any sense. The terminal or catch me if you can. Catch me if you can. I do like the terminal, but catch me if you can, I think is more underappreciated. From Steven Spielberg. And plus Tom Hanks catch trying to catch Leonardo DiCaprio. Mm-hmm. That's a real true story. Yeah, based on a true based on a true story too. Her outfit looks like it's picked out by a blind Sunday school. Whoa. Oh. Oh. But yeah, pick, catch me if you can. This is good. Oh. Oh, baby. Mm-hmm. You're back on the new charger? Yeah. Okay, you got school based on fixed cover. So, I'll do the charger. Okay. 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 Number one favorite movie of 1999. Fa- favorite film in 1999, The Matrix. I know people easily say the six scenes or stars of Star Wars Fans of Menace, but I picked The Matrix for my favorite movie in 1999. <laughs> <laughs> broken Arrow or Face Off? I haven't seen Broken Arrow, but I have seen Face Off with Nicolas Cage and John Travolta, so I'll go with Face Off. Very crazy, weird movie. Thoughts on Die Hard with a Vengeance? I posted posted a review back in 2016. I like that one. Is I'm not sure why I ranked it in my Die Hard ranking, but is but Die Hard with a Vengeance I do like Bruce Willis and Samuel L. Jackson. I do, I like that one. I like all five of the Die Hard movies. <clears throat> Can you rank the DC Animated Universe? I sure so I can do ranking of it on Letterbox. So, why is everyone stressing over this thing? 
you could just buy his garages and he just broke indictment. <laughs> you cry, Sarah. A parcel is free and free and clean. Genesis. A piece. Shout out to Crown and Girl. A piece with Jim George. So. <laughs> A piece for everyone else. <laughs> and that's her character. She starts off by being a good person, then starts doing some things that she's not proud of, and you build yourself back up. Have a good time, anyway. Now I guess we're okay. I hate this song. <laughs> this, we lo love this song. <laughs> but yeah, I'll probably rank the DC anime universe at some point. <laughs> Did everyone just a kiss? Did Regina George and Shine Omen, Miss Norberry and Miss Mrs. Duvall? <laughs> the thing with this movie is that no matter who you are, this movie can pander to anyone. And it could be you can find it funny. I guess I've seen some people say this is one of the more overrated films. That's their opinion, but I don't really think there's nothing overrated about it. And now we get into the end of the film, which again I love the soundtrack. And here coming up, you have Halcyon plus On and On. Which was her, which we've heard also in Mortal Kombat 1995. I did see the new one, by the way, and I, I reviewed that. Karen, Karen Smith, 68 degrees. Mm -hmm. She's in a new click. So I still get to see him on weekends. Shiny plastic. So hey, person in the world to ask for a human being. It just see, this ending is great. Janice and Kevin in love. Goal world is at peace. Regina. Mm -hmm. And if anyone try to work, try to mess up that piece, they knew I know. Not like that. <laughs> That's it. That was Mean Girls. I I have fun talking about this on the anniversary, talking to your, you guys about your questions. Now, to give my final thoughts for the 17 year anniversary. This movie still holds up. This movie is still funny. 17 years later, had a clever script, great writing, great characters. Has some has some important messages in that that should be be talked about. A great cast. This is Lindsay Lohan's best movie, in my opinion. 
Greg Dorison from Walk Waters, great supporting cast, Roger McAdams, Team Meadows, Amanda Seyfried, Lacey Sabur, Amy Poehler. Night, awesome soundtrack. This is in my top 100 favorite movies of all time. It's way up there. This is a great film that works on its own. The standalone sequel that tried to be this but was nothing but retread is awful. I do not like the Mean Girls move from Mean Girls 2 from 2011. That is one of the, that is an insulting embarrassment to the original Mean Girls. And I would lo- I would like to see a sequel to this with the original cast. Only if you ignore the second one from 2011. So, that was it. So, in the comment section down below, what did you guys think of this? Did you like it? Did you hate it? Are you in the middle? All my social media links to such are in the description box down below. Also, be sure to check out the 5 Film Geeks podcast down below. If you want to know what I think of Batman Bad Blood, I did a review it. In the little catch-up review, you can type it in on my search channel and you will find it so that's it so you guys can cool join the amtastinus and i'll see you in the next one